All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome welcome back to another virtual reading. Today, I'm joined by Genevieve Paturo, author of the newly released book, Purpose, Passion, and Pajamas, How to Transform Your Life, Embrace the Human Connection, and Lead with Meaning. Today, Jen will be doing a short reading from her book. So to start, up, to start us off, Jen, please introduce yourself and your book for our audience. Thank you, Kesley. Hi, everyone. Um, as Kesley said, this is my new book. And I'm going to read a little bit about it. I'm the founder of the nonprofit pajama program. And I was climbing the corporate ladder, jumped off when I met a little girl who asked me um, a simple question, but it changed everything. I started to read in shelters and bring books and pajamas because they were sleeping in their clothes. So the question she asked me and what happened 20 years following that moment in my life has given me so much insight and so many life lessons to share. And I've been inspired by the tens of thousands of people who helped us get to the point now, 20 years later, where we've delivered 7 million new pairs of pajamas and books to children around the US and in Puerto Rico, and in some cases beyond. So those life lessons are here in my heart of the matter, takeaways at the end of every chapter. And I'll read a little of the story and um, what are the takeaways that pertain to that chapter? Here we go. This is about when I started to go to the shelters to read one of the very first times. Feeling, I reached the street where the shelter was located and feeling very alone and out of my element. I was afraid to take the elevator, even though I quickly realized that being alone in a stairwell could have been just as problematic. I essentially ran up the two flights checking over my shoulder every step of the way. I tried to calm myself down. I'd spend an hour reading and we'd all have a good time, no big deal. I had a bag full of popular children's books with colorful pictures. A young woman dressed casually in jeans greeted me. I was more formal in a corporate pantsuit and I remember feeling so awkward, just ridiculously over to sense my eye. The woman was all smiles and extremely grateful. She told me she'd been a little surprised by my call. You brought them all these books? She asked me, genuinely touched. Come, I'll get you settled in this room. Then I'll bring the children in. She led me into a room that was bare, except for a few straight-backed chairs. It felt like an industrial workspace. Kids' coats were piled on a low shelf that ran along the walls. Then I saw the children at the door. The anxiety left me immediately and I exhaled a long breath. They walked into that near empty room slowly and I melted a little with every face I saw. I felt compelled to be upbeat, to give them a great evening, even though at that point I had no idea how dire their circumstances were. I was so out of touch, so ignorant of their plight, and I was ashamed that I had arrived thinking I could make this some sort of a party. I didn't know where to sit or stand, so I plopped myself down on the worn carpet and the kids followed suit. I groped for a book that was just right and chose a story about an animal. For the rest of the hour, I read and read and read. Like so many teachers do, I read a page, then showed them the accompanying pictures in the book. Page by page, I watched their faces for reactions. I saw a few smiles, some curiosity, along with a lot of empty stares. Nobody spoke. None of the children, not any of the adults. As for me, our time together on the floor was the most still I had been in years. I was grounded and in touch with the combined souls of these kids and my own soul all at once. I felt connected to them somehow. It was as if the world had stopped, as if we were all headed somewhere new and safe together. Somewhere in their faces had something of a profound effect on me. I had no idea what the future would bring, but that night I felt a fullness in my heart where it had been empty before. Just as I felt compelled to sit on the floor in that room, simultaneously I was being pulled away from my life as I knew it. It was a totally unexpected, heaven-sent tipping point. I just wanted to get in and out safely, spend an hour, that's it. Now I knew that wouldn't be possibly, possibly be enough. I wanted to come back and I wanted to find more places like this one. As affecting as these experiences were for me, I grew restless. I couldn't stop thinking that maybe I could do more than simply read. I felt guilty walking out after an hour, 
leaving them with only books and a memory of story time. How much was I really helping? Was it more unsettling to them that I left them too? Books had always been an escape for me as a child, but the discontentment that made me reach for a book was nothing compared to what these children were hoping to escape. Was I fooling myself thinking I was doing something that made a difference? I continued my visits, reading to the children in a circle on the floor and looking for a way to do more. Surely I'd find it. So the heart of the matter takeaways for this chapter, I uh, would like to read there. Life lessons that I learned and insights after I'd spent that time with the children. Every day we have a choice. Most of us forget that. But it's a fact. When you open your eyes every morning, you consciously make a choice. Same path as yesterday or different. There's no law that says once you change course, you can't go back. I took solace in remembering that. Every day I had a choice. Keep going back or go forward. It's up to you. The next, the second and last heart of the matter for that chapter is called Embrace the Human Connection. In the past 20 years, I've seen extraordinary things happen when people meet face to face. That's because it's here we begin to connect heart to heart. The human connection has inexplicable power. It can be profound and transforming and it always evokes respect. It is in these moments when we lead with meaning that we move mountains and more significantly, it's when we move people. So thank you for listening. Um, my book, Purpose, Passion and Pajamas is available on Amazon and other retailers online. And I hope you're intrigued enough to get a copy and read it for yourself and contact me. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you. That was a beautiful reading, Jen. Thank you so much for joining us today. And the link to purchase Jen's book will be in the Greenleaf bio. Um, it will also be in the footnotes of this video. So make sure to check out her book, Purpose, Passion, and Pajamas. And we will see you guys next time for our next virtual reading. Thank you so much for tuning in.